Praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Impact. Today, you'll mark the day down in your life. The day when God himself by his hand writes a new story of your life. Am I talking to somebody there? I wish I could come there to you. Hold your hand. Pick you up. Lift you up. And show you to the world. And say this is somebody. Anybody there? Today is special youth impact. And you become a great impact in your life, in your nation, in your world, in Jesus' name. Heaven will descend upon your life. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, the one that knows everyone from all eternity until today i come i come in faith i come with joy i come with excitement wanting to take every boy every girl every young adult every professional i want to take everyone now into your very presence that your power that your love that your great compassion that the great manifestation will come upon every life at this hour in jesus name Amen. manifest manifest your power manifest manifest your glory manifest manifest your love upon everyone right here now in jesus name Amen. rewrite the story write the history of everyone here today and i pray that all those who have been dejected despondent discouraged thinking that there is no way forward i pray that this day you'll open the way for everyone in jesus name i pray lord that those who are thinking of giving it up turning back thinking that there is nothing new that will happen a new story a new history a new chapter will be reaching in the life of everyone here today and i pray for those online everyone everywhere in every congregation every continent and every community i pray lord that this day will be a special day in every life in jesus name a miracle in manifestation power divine in manifestation in every life present here today and over there all over the world in jesus name we well, thank you lord because we know that you have answered and we will see great things in every life we never dreamt of before in jesus name in jesus name i pray and everybody shout God bless you, you can sit down. We come to this special occasion and a special meeting when the Lord of heaven will look at you, take hold of you one by one and it will do something in your life, something unforgettable. I'm talking to you today before the prayer, special prayer on the charge to be ignited for glory the charge there is a charge 
There is a challenge that heaven himself, heaven itself brings upon you. And he charges you then that being impacted for glory, you are charged to move on and walk like you never did and run like you never did and live like you never did and act like you never did the charge to be ignited for glory we're looking at Isaiah chapter 43 and I'm reading from verse 7 Isaiah chapter 43 reading from verse 7 even everyone think about that think about that even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him. I, the almighty God, the God that has all power, the God that has the power to do all things, all things in the past, all things in the present, all things in the future, all things for you, all things for me, all things for everyone, even everyone that is called by my name for i have the god of heaven talks to you the god of heaven speaks to you and the god of heaven says i have created him for my glory i have formed him yea i have made him you will discover in your life from today that the Almighty is the one that has made you. And he has made you for glory. He's made you for greatness. And what he made you for will be accomplished in Jesus' name. The amen is tiny. You know when you say amen, from the, they say from the bottom of your heart, from the depth of your heart, and then it comes out. A loudspeaker will pick it and then heaven will hear. Heaven will affirm it and confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Then in verse 19, it says, Behold, I will do a new thing. The God of heaven, the God that cannot lie, and the God that cannot fail, and the God who has done it for other people, and he comes to you now, and is about to do that new thing in your life it says behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it I will even make a way in your wilderness and rivers in your desert and then he tells us in verse 21 verse 21 says these people this person have I made, have I formed for myself. He picks up on you and he targets you and he numbers you and names you and he says, this one have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my glory. It will happen in Jesus' name. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, I'm reading from verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 31 we're looking at verse 23 and he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge a charge what he was to do a charge what he was to act out a charge what he was to be for the children of Israel for his nation a charge and that is the reason we're calling this today a charge as he gave charge to Joshua he gave charge to other people your time has now come and he gives you a charge to be ignited for glory and he said be strong and of a good courage you know if we're going to be and i know we're going to be i know you are going to be i know that everyone is going to take the charge and is going to have the courage it's going to have the strength and it's going to be and to do what the lord has called him to do you will be strong in your mind 
in your heart, in your devotion, in your determination. You have to be strong. You'll not be a jellyfish. You'll not be an amphibian. Neither feed for the land, nor feed for the sea. You will be a person that says, I know I have a charge from the Lord. And the Lord has ignited me. And the Lord has inflamed me. And the Lord has empowered me because of that. I have the strength of a person that can carry out the charge of the Lord. It says, he gave him a charge and said, be strong and be of good courage. The strength of the Lord will enter into your life. And the courage coming from on high will enter into your life even today in Jesus' name. The charge to be ignited for glory. There are three things I'm looking at as usual as we talk about the charge for you. The charge for him. The charge for her to be ignited for glory. Number one, the willingness to move towards glory. And that, that's where it starts from. Anything you are going to do, the willingness to do that. If you're going to go to school, you have to have the willingness to do that. You have chosen a course, the willingness to study. And then you are passed out and the willingness to work. And you are working in the willingness to make progress you're making progress the willingness to make research and say what can i do more how can i make my world better more how can i do something i've never done before number one is the willingness say the willingness you see the mountain and the willingness to climb you see the journey and the willingness to go there the willingness is number one in our lives the willingness to move towards glory number two is Winning with the mind for your goal. Winning with the mind for your goal. Absent-minded people don't win. The people that don't push their mind, their focus, their vision, their inner strength, their inner drive, they are in a desire in what they want to do. They never win. But the people that have a mind, a mind of their own, not the mind of Joseph and the mind of all the other people, the people that don't have their mind and they borrow the minds of other people. Can, can you lend me your mind there? Those people, you cannot make use of another person's mind and make progress. You have to have the mind by yourself. I will. I must. I'm going somewhere. I'm going to achieve something. I abandon all those ways of mediocrity. And then I come and I say, I'm climbing the mountain. The mind to go on. And when you're tired, the mind to say, I'll take another step. I'll make another move. I'll go another mile. The people that have the mind, whatever they have done, I'll go the extra mile. I do the other thing. I go the way of success. The people that have their mind, they're the people that win. Winning with the mind for your goal. They have a goal. They have an idea. They have an ideal. They have the peak of the mountain they want to reach. And they say that goal is before me all the time. Because of that, they set their mind on that goal. And they win. I will win. I will win. <laughs> you must have that mind. Number one, the willingness to move towards glory. Number two is the winning with the mind for your goal. Number three is walking with the master to glory. There's somebody who has shown glory, reflected glory, described glory, possessed glory. His name is Jesus and he is the master and you want to move on to glory all you need to do is come by the side of the master who already has walked to glory and is willing to take everybody's hand is willing to lead everyone to that place of glory and as you walk with him step by step a step at a time a day at a time a week at a time a month at a time and you do what needs to be done at this time 
taking a step at a time and walking with the master you'll achieve that glory the lord has created you for in jesus name anybody there it will happen i said it will happen we're coming now to number one number one is willingness to move willingness to move the fellow who stands still the fellow is afraid to go on the fellow who is relaxing and is enjoying a life of idleness a life of laziness a life that is not willing to rise and move that fellow never gets near glory but the person that is willing to move towards glory you move towards your goal you don't move against your goal you don't look back and then walk backwards but you have the willingness to move towards glory that willingness will take you to where you will be whenever you say amen you say a loud amen that will challenge everything to clear out of your way yeah. willingness to move towards glory look at isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 if ye be willing that's the secret if ye be willing all the garments of unwillingness you take that off and throw it away and you wear the look of willingness you have the mind of willingness you have the desire and you're willing if ye be willing and be obedient ye shall eat the good of the land now in being willing to be ignited i'm going to use as i normally do the letters of that word ignited you might want to write down number one i invited by god to glory invited by god to glory every other voice will invite you to disgrace and to something inglorious and to something in that word but when you hear the voice of the lord anytime you hear that voice it might call you to repentance it's his invitation it might call you to make right something in your life it's an invitation to glory it might call you to pray it is an invitation to glory it might call you to link up with him and reconcile with him it might call you to leave that old path and come to the new path is God's invitation I invited by God the God of glory and that's why he says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 it says come now that's the invitation the invitation of God and it's inviting you to glory it says come now he dwells in glory he lives in glory he lives for glory and when he says oh, you come he's saying come to my place come to where i am i live in glory and i'm calling to glory come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow and though they be red like crimson he said they shall be as well he invites you to glory by telling you to leave off your sin and to leave off your iniquity and to leave that gang and to stop that occultism him and then to come out and to come now at this time you spend too long time in darkness it says come to the light it says come to my salvation it says come now and let us reason together says the lord do your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow and though they be red like crimson they shall be as well i invited by God to glory and invited by the God of glory G there is given all of grace and glory giving all of grace and glory when you come like that and you respond to the invitation of the God of glory and then he gives you grace grace has come to you 
I said grace has come to you. The grace that forgives. The grace that sets free. The grace that transforms your life. And then you are not in mediocrity anymore. And you are not walking with those ones that are, they don't know the way they are going. And therefore they are going the wrong way. He now gives you grace. In Psalm 84, reading from verse 11. For the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. I don't have any grace to have or that open door and that opportunity. I don't have the connection. I don't have the long leg. I don't have the contact. Today, the grace to have the open door and to go through that open door, that grace has come for you. Because it says he will give grace and glory and nothing good shall he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I you are invited G, you are given, and three, you are numbered for greatness by God. Numbered, numbered, numbered for greatness by God. God knows your name. He knows your number. And he's calling you, he's numbered. You said, I'm choosing you. You are mine. And because you are mine, I'm going to bring you to glory. Where are you there? Amen. Amen. Amen in your life. Look at this in John chapter 15 verse 16. It says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. The God of heaven, he has chosen you. The Christ of Calvary, he has chosen you. The, he knew you were a sinner. He knew your sin. He knew your evil. And all the same is said, I'll die for him. I'll die for her. I'll take her sins away. I'll brush her up. I'll blot all the sins out and I choose her and I number her as one of my followers. He has called you today and he invites you and he has given you the grace and he says now I number him for greatness by God himself ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatsoever 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 ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give each you your day has come now I is impacted by the goodness of God impacted by the goodness of God he invites he gives he numbers you as one of his people and then he doesn't leave you like that he impacts you your life your mind will have a new impartation today at this time I say you have a new impartation by the Lord at this time. Impacted by the goodness of God. In Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 4. It says, so despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance the goodness of god leads you to say if god is so good to me as a sinner what will happen if i become a son a daughter of god if when i was far away the lord manifested his goodness upon my life what will happen if I come and I'm reconciled with him that's what he's saying the goodness of the Lord he has given you in the past now invites you and he wants to impact your life with goodness more and more it will happen today if you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ or you have been on the periphery at the perimeter, the circumference of the Christian faith, now you come into the circle itself and you say, Lord, I see your goodness. 
you preserve my life i see your goodness you keep me in health i see your goodness you keep me happy and i'm even making progress in my endeavors i see your goodness and because of that you come in in repentance and total reliance on the lord and faith in the lord and more goodness of the lord will come in your life in jesus name Tivia is transformed by grace for glory transformed by grace for glory when the grace of god comes into our lives it does something you know people say grace 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 that is greater than all our sin and they keep on sinning they don't understand when grace comes into our lives that grace will transform our life will turn our lives around will change our lives and will take us from the ground level and take you to the sky level in jesus name that's why it says in romans chapter 12 reading from verse 1 it says i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service look at verse 2 there in verse 2 it says and be not conformed to this world why 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 be not conformed to this world now the world you may not understand is going down 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 anybody who's going to go up will have to change and turn around and go the opposite direction think about that that the world whether you talk about the traditions of the world is going down, down, and down. You talk about the practices of the world, they're going down, down, and down. You talk about the sanctity of life. They're going down, down, and down. That people do not have uh, that sacredness of life like they used to have. And thinking about moral aptitude and the moral direction the world is going down down and down and you want to go up because glory is not down glory is up glory is not in the dungeon down below glory is up glory is not in the defilement in the valley the, the glory is up and the people who are ignited for glory they see the world going down down and down and then because you want the glory of god in your life it says be not conformed to this world the rotting language of the world is becoming worse and worse and the rotting dressing of the world is becoming worse and worse and the night clubs are becoming worse and worse and relationships between boys and girls young men young women they're going down worse and worse because the world is going down and down and down and down it says i want to feed you for glory therefore you'll not go the direction of the world be not conform to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may be that she may prove that she may know that she may experience if you're going to experience the glory of god and if you're going to go up and amount to anything at all then you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove that she may know that she may experience that she may reflect what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god today is the day for your transformation it will transform your life it will turn everything in your life around for the better in jesus name and as you see the world going down the drain you come the opposite direction you climb up you are climbing up to glory then he there enlisted for growth towards glory enlisted enlisted that the lord says you are now on the queue and you join the company of the people who are going up 
and they are growing towards glory. In Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 15, it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up, grow up, grow up. You know what? The so are aiming at excellence. They grow every day. Let me explain. You know, you look at a simple thing like vocabulary. And today, you learn a vocabulary, a word you never knew before. Some, some people make it their goal. I learn five new words today that I never knew. So that I'm growing even in my understanding of language. When I know that word, I want to grow. I will use at least one or two of the words I knew just recently because I learn more words every day and then I use more words every day then in your life growth means I look at my life yesterday I was afraid to do that and today I will do something today I was always afraid of that I didn't think I will ever do then I, I used to study this subject and it's always been difficult I'm going to conquer one page of this uh, particular textbook today you see when you do like that and every day is adding to your vocabulary every day is adding to your studies every day is adding to your learning every day is learning to conquering the fears you have in your life I am shy. I don't know how to talk to people. And when they are talking to me, I look at now, I'm going to grow every day, a step at a time. I'm going to talk to somebody today I've always been afraid to talk to. I'm going to look at somebody eyeball to eyeball today. I've always been afraid to do that. When you pick up something in your life, you were afraid to do before, and every day you're moving on, every day you are growing and you say praise the Lord by the time I'm retiring in the night I'm going to sleep I'll say I learned five new words today I used two new words today I confronted something I never knew I could overcome I did that today when you do that every day every day by the strength of the Lord by the help of the Lord you'll be growing towards glory i will grow i said i will grow you will grow in jesus name enlisted for growth for growing towards uh, towards victory it says speaking the truth in love that i may grow up into him in all things you look at all the areas of your life i need growth there I'm slow. I want to quick. I want to be quick. And then I increase my speed a little bit today. I'm shy. I want to be courageous. I'm an introvert. I want to be an extrovert. Then you increase your connection and your contact, interaction with people a little at a time, a step at a time, every day. And all the areas of your life, when you consider things like that, and you're moving on and moving on and moving on, I don't know how to pray but i'm going to spend uh, uh, when i spend one minute in prayer i don't know what to say again uh, today i'm going to spend five minutes and i'm going to talk to the lord as i talk to a friend as i talk to my daddy as i talk to my mommy i increase that and then faith i'm going to believe something today that i didn't believe for yesterday it is that growing uh, little by little by little and they tell us drops of water makes a mighty ocean and you're growing into him in all things which is the head even christ you will grow and then the last word there d designed for greater grace of glory there are grades of glory there are levels of glory and the lord designs us for greater grades 
inner glory or the greater great, uh, uh, grades of glory in Romans chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 7 Romans chapter 2 verse 7 to them who by patient continuance patient continuance patient continuance in well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life we have to patiently go on i'm sure you have uh, you, you've read the story it's a fable actually of the tortoise and the hare and the hare said i'll beat you in any race and the tortoise said you don't know what you are talking about i will beat you in every race and uh, you know the the, uh, the um, was uh, so, so sure about himself and it's okay let's start on your mark search go and the hair just uh, shut up like that and it was running and he knew he knew that the tortoise will never catch up with him and so went to the side of the road and rested slept off and the tortoise patiently patiently gradually gradually a step at a time slowly it went and while the air was still sleeping because he was so sure i'll make it before before that tortoise get there the tortoise got there before him uh, that is the value of patience in our lives that slowly and gradually and patiently you're moving on even when you're tired wake up even when it appears i cannot read another page again of this textbook my brain is blocked move on read at least one page more after that another one page more i'll soon stop another one page more it is that patience in life you're trying to correct something in your life uh, and then uh, you know the other fellow that is in a hurry i decide i make resolution i turn over a new leaf i'll do this i'll do that like the air he jumps on he accomplishes nothing but you a day at a time i'll conquer that I'll conquer that problem. I'll solve that problem. I'll, you know, mend that net. I will do nothing. I'm patiently, patiently, patiently. You are going on. You will arrive. I will arrive where are you i will arrive you'll arrive in jesus the willingness to do that the willingness to respond to the invitation of the god of glory the willingness to be given all of grace and glory the willingness to be numbered for greatness by god the willingness to be impacted by the goodness of god the willingness to be transformed by the grace for glory and the willingness to be enlisted for growth and growing towards glory the willingness to understand that you are destined for greater grades of glory i pray god will give you the willingness and you'll accept the willingness and you will manifest the willingness in your life in jesus name i come to number two number two now we're looking at winning you will win I will win, winning with the might for your goal. Now, you will know that every athlete has a goal. They want to win a medal. That's why you see them on our streets and they are trotting, they are jogging and they are running on the street because they're training their muscles. Those are the people, they have a goal. Why? The farmer has a goal at the time of reaping. I want to have this kind of crop so that i can take that to the market and sell and be able to take care of my family everyone that amounts to something on earth has a goal and that goal when you have that goal you will have the mind to keep to your goal now if i say are you still in school yes i am why are you in school 
Daddy said I should go to school. That's not a goal. That's not a goal. It's something that you realize by yourself. I see other people, they quit school and they're doing petit trading on the side of the road. Why do I remain in school? Why don't I join those people who are doing the petty petty trading on the side of the road? Because I have a goal that the petty trading on the side of the road cannot achieve. Because of that goal, you have a mind. Other people drop out, I will not be a dropout. Other people quit, I will not quit. Other people stop, I will not stop. Because I am a man, I am a woman, I am a boy, I am a girl that has a goal. And it is the goal that keeps you walking. It's the goal that keeps you reading. It's the goal that keeps you researching. It's the goal that keeps you serving. If the goal you have and the mind that you have that you are going to reach that goal that's makes that's what makes you win eventually and nothing comes your way that is strong enough to bend your mind to twist your mind and to derail your mind from the goal that is set before you. I want you to, you know, think of your life and say, I'm doing this because of this goal. That's my ideal. That's the destination. That's the goal I want to reach. Even when you're an older person, you still need to have a goal. And uh, sometimes our system of work um, in every nation, they have the age of retirement. And when you reach that age, what do you call age of retirement? Your brain is still there. Your mind is still there. Life is still there. And you, you still have the strength. And you can do something that other people cannot do. And you are not just uh, somebody just moving along. You say now that the world in their system has retired me. What goal do I have for living? They conducted a research and they found Found out the people who did not have any goal after retirement, they wake up, they eat, they read newspapers, they sleep, they do that the following day, the following no goal, they die sooner than the people who have retired and have goals. The goals keep you alive, the goals keep your blood flowing, the goals make you strong, and the goals make you to be an achiever. And I want you even achiever after your natural, normal, official retirement. What you achieve will go beyond what you ever did all the years before retirement but you need a goal and I pray the Lord himself will help you to have a worthy goal a winning goal in Jesus name we're looking at Philippians chapter 3 and I'm looking at verse 13 Philippians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 13 now, brethren I count not myself to have apprehended because of that I'm not retiring but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before that's a man with a goal the things that are behind the good things I've done that's gone to record, that's recorded that's in history, I leave that but now I have a goal and I have a destination and I have something I am moving towards, it says forgetting those things which are behind I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before, when you wake up in the morning, anything before you list of things to do and list of chapters to read and list of people to contact and list of email to reply and the list of texts you have to send and the list of things you have to do because that day you have a goal and you are reaching forth and reaching forth it is that attitude it is that activity of Forgetting the things you have done already and forgetting all the awards you have got already and then moving on to do things which are before you. That's the goal. And as you reach forth towards the goal, you will achieve. 
Look at verse 14. It says in verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There are people, they don't have anything they are pressing towards. Their life is a life of routine. What they did last week, exactly the same they're doing this week. What they did yesterday, exactly the same they're doing today. As it was yesterday, so it is today, and so for them it will ever be. They don't have a price ahead of them, a goal ahead of them, a destination ahead of them, an achievement ahead of them, a desire ahead of them but Paul the apostle said I whatever others do I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9 we're looking at verse 10 it says whatsoever thy hand findeth to do do it Whatsoever your hand find that you do, do it. Well, I want to become an engineer. That's the goal. But then I don't have the calling. I don't have the employment of an engineer now. All right. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it. I want to become a doctor. That's my goal. But it looks like all the subjects I need to take so that I will go for the studies of medicine. I don't have everything completed. That's all right. But whatsoever your hands find to do, do it. I want to become a pilot. And but now I, I, I don't even have the entry qualifications yet. That's all right. That's all right. But whatsoever your hand finds it to do, do it. You see, you have to be doing something. Have you noticed that, you know, when we pass out of school, let's say, for example, you pass out of secondary school and you took English literature and then you took mathematics, uh, the first one and the second one, you took chemistry, biology, and physics, and you took uh, some other subjects too. And your past were flying colors but then after you are passed that a white exam for the next month you're on vacation for the next three months you're on vacation and for the next one year you're still reveling in the joy because i feel it's so sad and you don't reach those subjects for one year two years three years you forget because what you don't use, you lose. And because you are not moving on in studies, you're going to forget everything you have learned. It's like that everywhere, in every place. Now, even in simple matters, I used to know that sister so-and-so before she got married, this was her full name. And you knew the name of the father. Now she's got him married one year, seven years, ten years, and you never use the old name of her father anymore. And you only say sister so-and-so using the name of the husband with her. If anybody asks you, well, you know sister so-and-so, yes I do. What's, what was her maiden name? What? I used to call her by that name every day. I've forgotten. What you don't use, you lose. If you don't use your brain, you lose the activity of that brain. If you don't use your limbs, your hands, the members of your body, you lose the activity, the activation of those limbs. Therefore, whatsoever your hand finds to do, you want this goal, you want to reach that goal, but at the present time today, you are not there yet. Whatsoever ever thy hand find it to do, do it with thy mind. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Now, how do we win having the mind with a goal? We're going to use the word ignited again because it's when we're ignited, we can win. I, there is Identify your mission with a glorious.
Where am I in employment? Identify your mission. Employment. Identify your mission with a glorious goal. It is when you identify, in fact, you write that down. What's my mission? What's my ministry? What's my goal? What's my drive? Where am I going? What do I want to achieve? Identify. That's how we get achievement towards that goal. G. Give up the misdeeds against the godly goal. You have a goal and it's a godly goal. And there are misdeeds that will hinder you from getting and achieving that goal. There's something to give up. The miscreants in your life that will say, let's go and play. You read too much. Let's go and do this. It's like, uh, you know, you have this too much. Let's go and swim. It's like you're just. Those things you have to give up, the, mis the miscreants, you give them up. The, mis the misdeeds, the habits in your own life that you have developed. And those habits are driving you down, down, down. You have to give up all those misdeeds. Give up the misunderstandings. You know, they misunderstand me. They do this against me. And all the time you are murmuring and grumbling and complaining. Give up all that and face your future. And face the godly goal the Lord has given you. Now, if you think about your life think about your life uh, what is it in my life that really really i need to give up that i need to give up that i need to give up that so that uh, i've seen uh, those things are keeping me down those things are keeping me backward those things are not allowing me to have uh, the grades i ought to have and they're not allowing me to have the achievement i ought to have i need to give uh, them uh, up give up your misdeeds against the godly good and then end uh, is network only with men of good goals network you cannot do it all alone sometimes you need to reach with another person study with another person work with another person labor with another person achieve with another person because two are better than one and it is that networking is strong in that and weak in that and we connect the strength and the weakness together and that strength of the other person will lift you up to a higher level your network but only with men of good goals there are men of evil goals bad goals and sinful goals and destructive goals you cannot network with them because birds of the same feather work together you are not like them they are not like you so you cannot network with them network with men only the men with good goals i interact with mentors for a guided goal. Interact with mentors. Mentors are the people, they've been there before. They've done it before. They've achieved before. And they're willing and they're open to mentor us. They're willing to lift us up. They're willing to show us the way. They've gone that way and they've achieved. And so they say, come under their tutelage and come under their mentoring. And when you are confused, they'll say, that you're right. When you have questions, they'll ask, answer your questions. And when it appears that you do not, the, you don't know the way forward, the mentors are there. They say, "I helped so and so. I enlightened so and so. I educated so and so. I developed so and so. I lifted up so and so." And they can do exactly the same thing for you. That you interact regularly with mentors for a guided goal. T is to turn your mind for the great goal. Turn your mind for the great goal. You know, 
Our brain, brain is good, brain power, but the mind is stronger. The hand, a good hand, a strong hand, very good, but the mind is stronger. The feet to run, that's great, but the mind is a great thing. If you train the mind, if you turn the mind towards your goal, the great goal, the mind will tell you, will show you how to move on. Let me give you an illustration. Now, it's all the experiences of the past, they're like deposits will make to the bank. And then you have the teller in your hand, and you want to withdraw what you have deposited in the bank. In life, we have what we call the bank of experience. There are areas you have failed in the past. All that is deposited in the bank. There are areas you have succeeded in the past. All that is deposited in your bank. Now, a situation comes. And then you tell your mind, can you tell me, in a similar situations like this before, and your mind, like the teller, he'll go to your bank, the bank of memory, said yes, you failed when you were to have debate at school, okay, you failed when you went to an interview, you failed when they asked you questions you couldn't answer, you failed when even the things you have studied, they asked you, and you couldn't produce any results. And that remembrance, your mind telling you that you fail, you fail, you fail, will say in this case as well, you will fail. And then you are down because of what you are withdrawing from your bank. If you told your mind, now my mind, can you tell me something? I'm facing this situation. Can you remind me where I succeeded before? In a situation like this, the same mind will go to your bank, the bank of your past experiences. Yes, you can do this. Do you remember at such a time when they call you together in the primary school to run and you shut off and then you became the first sister, remember? Do you remember when the teacher came to the class and said, if you know this, I'll give you this thing. And then you raise up your hand and then you got it. Your mind will go to your back and remind you of the good things you've done before. And you say, since you did that before, you can do this now. But you need to train that mind so that your mind will not be bringing back to you negative things and depressing things and discouraging things. That's why this T is train or turn your mind for the greater good. So see there's a slash there. Train your members. I mean the members of your body. I mean your feet. I mean your mouth. I mean your ears. I mean your eyes. I mean your hands. I mean all the members of your body to go in the direction of the goal that you have. Let me tell you this now. When you are developing a new habit to make you succeed, you try it now, just an action. That doesn't become a habit yet. You have to do it the second time, and the third time, and the fourth time, and then the members of your body and the members within you will begin to acclimatize and change and match the good action you're bringing forth. And when you do that, every time, every time a call comes, every time a challenge comes, and then you're training the members of your body not to talk rubbish not to talk discouragement not to look the wrong direction as you do that a number of days research tells us for 21 days you're fine automatically it becomes what we call reflex action you just do them automatically some other serious habits might take up to 66 days but you're doing that over and over and over and you're training your mind, you're turning your mind and you're training your members, you're turning your members towards the great goal and if there is educate for mastery. 
before graduating goals and beyond graduating goals. The people that make it in life, they're not the people that say, I've graduated now and therefore no more studies. You educate for mastery. You educate to master something in your life. Master a subject in your life. Master a habit in your life. Master whatever you have to do, you educate for mastery before graduating and beyond graduating. And did there is drive with meaningful motives toward growth and growing. Your driver, you know, if you don't drive, you drive a car, you drive a bicycle, you drive a motorcycle, they'll take you somewhere. But when you drive your personality, you are a driven person, you are a go-getting person, and you are driving, and because you drive in the right direction, you become an achiever. I will achieve. But you know, somebody has a car and they parked the car at the garage. And the car is neat, might even wash the car, and everything is sparkling, but he doesn't drive the car. And then, after some months, even after some years, because the car has been there, I have a car, that's my car, and the car is good. After some years, he goes in there, wants to drive. The thing is, is uh, rusting. The thing cannot move anymore. The same thing with your mind. The same thing with your life. You pack it there. You're not doing anything. You're not acting out anything. You're not achieving anything. You're not driving anywhere. And you don't face any challenge. And you just pack yourself there. After a year or two or three. Now you hear a stirring message. And say, I will rise up now. Like, si like something. His eyes were gone and the strength was gone but now as you rise up today and you say I will begin because I'm going to drive with meaningful motive towards growth and towards my goal the growing goals because as you achieve this goal you look up there's a growing goal another goal is ahead of you and then you achieve that there's another ahead of you it's such a man it's such a woman Woman that is driving meaningfully and with good motives that is going to arrive at the growing goals. I pray the Lord will implant all this in your life in Jesus' name. Did I hear the amen I was expecting? Amen. I come to number three now. Number three, we're looking at walking with the master to glory. Walking with the master to glory. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 10. Hebrews chapter 2, we're reading from verse 10. It says, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory in bringing many daughters to glory in bringing many followers to glory in bringing many believers to glory that's what he wants to do and that's why we we'll walk with him is the messiah that's why we we'll walk with him is a mediator that's why we we'll walk with him if the master is going on to glory and we we'll walk with him to glory as we look at this i want to use those words again those letters again i invigorated by the master invigorated by the master when you are down and almost dead in your mind in your vision in your passion 
Now you link up with the master. He invigorates you. He energizes you. He empowers you. And once again, he injects you with the mind of moving on. There's nobody who can be with the master and remain as dull as he ever was. And remain as deadened as he ever was when you come and link up with the master. He inspires you. He invigorates you and he puts that injection in your heart, in your life, that you are going to be something and going to do something in life. It will happen in Jesus' name. And then G guided by the master, guided by the master. Anybody who has gone this way before can guide us. It's moved from here to glory. And you come and you're just beginning and you say I want to move on to glory he's been there before he is our guide and he sends the Holy Ghost to also guide us into all truth and therefore our link with him our connection with him will mean that we are guided by the master and named by the master named by the master have you seen people that you know god wants to take to glory and he names them moses moses and moses said here am i he named him because he wanted to do something with him samuel samuel he named him he wanted to do something with him and jesus said thou art peter the son of bad jonah flesh and blood Lord has not revealed this unto you but my father who is in heaven and he said upon this rock I build my church and I'm going to use us as an instrument and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The Lord names you. The Lord knows your name and the Lord has named you and he has put you, he has taken you away from the never do wells and he brings your name to among the people that will achieve in Jesus name. He called me by name. Say, he called me by name. He called me by name. He called me by name. And because he named you, the master has named you. Look at that blind man coming, but he meals, and everybody says, shut up. What do you think you are? How do you think you can achieve? And the man cried a, a great deal and said, master, son of David, have mercy on me. And then, even though the other people are saying, shut up, you cannot make it. We have not made it. Jesus said, call him and let him come. And today the Lord is calling you. Where are you? you will achieve i rejoice with you you will achieve because he named you are named by the master i interceded for by the master interceded for by the master i pray for them and not for them alone i pray for all of them that will believe on me through their word he prayed for those apostles and disciples and he prayed for you as well intercession and jesus said father i know that you always hear me and you always answer me the lord Lord is praying for you and the prayer of the Lord for you is not that you remain in mediocrity and remain at the ground level the prayer of the Lord will take you off from where you are to where you ought to be in Jesus name and then T there is translated by the master translated transported by the master the hand of the master the hand of the Lord takes us from where we are and this is the, this is why he kinds of ignites us for glory because by his power by his ignition and by his fire by the flame of the anointing he translates us himself to the kingdom of his dear son he empowered by the master empowered by the master what could you do without that 
power coming from on high. What could you do without that power coming from the master? That's why he says, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and on your way to success, on your way to achievement, on your way to your goal, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Be there, you are destined to dwell forever with our master. Your final home, my final home is heaven. The Lord has gone to prepare a place for you. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you will be. I can almost see as we look at open heavens, your mansion over there. Final glory, forever glory, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. And forever so, you will be of the Lord in Jesus' name. The Lord is preparing you for glory. And this is the moment of translation, transportation, out of where you are, a new level in your life today a new grade in your life today a new companionship in your life today look at Colossians chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 13 Colossians chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 13 what the Lord has done and what the Lord has accomplished which he wants to affirm and confirm in your life now who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and then he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That translation can take place right now. As you understand, you're leaving your past behind and you're looking up and you're looking forward and you know glory is ahead of you and the power and the might and the anointing of the Lord will affirm it in your life in Jesus name you're not a backward person anymore I'm not a backward person anymore I am moving up okay close that notebook now and rise up god is going to do it in your life the willingness that you come to the lord and say lord here i am i am a candidate for glory here i am i am a son i am a daughter i'm a man i'm a woman for glory i am a brother i am a sister for glory the willingness lord whatever it will take and whatever i need to give up and move forward and move up Lord, help me, and it will be done. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, open your mouth there and say, Lord, I will not remain at the same level. Maybe you are at a good level. There's something higher. We call it better level. Maybe you are at the better level. There's something higher than that, the best level. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Whatever I need to give up, I give up. And whatever I need to abandon, I abandon because I want to have, I want to have, I want to have that greater glory. Winning, winning with the mind, with a goal. You have the mind, you have a goal. You're not a wishy-washy person, a person that says, I don't know whether I'm strong enough for that or not. I'm, I don't know whether I, I can move forward or not. You have the mind and you say with God on my side and myself on the side of God, I have the mind to win and the mind to go to glory and you, and you the kind of surrender. Every other thing that will hinder your life and you say, here I am, I am ready for glory. And then the master says, I'll take you there. And he gives you his hand. Hold my hand. And your walk will seem to glory. Walking with the master. Uniting with the master. And living, dwelling with the master. Living for the master. And we two cannot talk together except we be agreed. You walk with him in agreement. And he leads you to glory. The Lord confirm it in your life. 
I said the Lord confirm it to your life. Raise up that hand and know that God has chosen you for a higher level, higher achievement, even today in Jesus' name. He will not abandon you by the side of the road. He will not leave you until all his promises are fulfilled in your life. Glory, that's your destiny. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone here, everyone there, everyone physically present there, everyone online, everyone in every community, congregation, or country, everyone everywhere, linking up now. I'm asking, Lord, as they're raising up their hand, hold their hand and pull them up to glory. We pray that everything of the past that has hindered or slowed down the glory and the goal. Lord, I pray, wipe everything away from every life in Jesus' name. And all the thoughts and all the mind of failure, all the stories of failure, all the dejection, discouragement. I cannot, I must not, I don't think I can do that. I'm always, you know, left behind. I pray all those things wipe away from every life in Jesus name and I pray the blood of Jesus the blood of the lamb will cleanse and erase every condemnation every corruption every sin every bad habit all the things that hinder us from living for glory and living to the glory of God I pray the blood of Jesus will wash everything away in Jesus name I pray Lord the assurance that you have forgiven the assurance that you have cleansed the assurance that you have transformed the assurance that you have translated everyone give that assurance to everyone in Jesus name and the grace the grace the grace of God to live for glory, to live in your goodness, to live in godliness. I pray, O oh Lord, that abundant grace that cannot fail, give to everyone in Jesus' name. And the understanding and the vision that they set the way, walk ye therein, give that understanding, that vision, give that to everyone right now in Jesus' name put testimony in every mouth. I pray that every sickness that will hinder our going to the place you ordained for us, take all that sickness away. Everything of demon affliction, demonic affliction, that will hinder us from getting to the place we ought to get to, wipe that away in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, the God of glory, take your sons and your daughters and your people, the believers, to a higher level of glory in Jesus' name. Affirm that in every life. Confirm that in every life. As we achieved it for Joseph, as we achieved it for Joshua, as we achieved it for Jeremiah, as we achieved it for Samuel, as we achieved it for David, as we achieved it for Peter, Paul, John, all those people, our time has now come. Let there be achievement and let there be a winning level for everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I got it. I got it. The Lord confirm it in every one of your lives in Jesus' name.